Some of you may be very comfortable with the TI-83 or 84 and you've been using it for years and that's wonderful. Um, for those of you who are less familiar with it, I want to show you some of the important fundamentals that you need to know about the calculator <clears throat> before we really start the statistical functions that it will do for us all semester. Um, the first few things on this list, and by the way, this handout is in the um, test one folder under contents and momentum. You can print this handout so that you can follow along with me and make sure you have your calculator handy so you can practice what I'm showing you. But the first few things on this list, I'm not going to be able to illustrate it using the um, emulator that I have on my computer. When we get to working some problems together, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm clicking and exactly what I'm showing up on my screen. The on key is in the bottom left hand of the calculator. Of course, that's what you use to turn the calculator on. What I can't show you with the emulator is how to turn the calculator off. To turn it off, you just use second and on because off is written in blue right over the on button. Anything that is in blue over another button, you have to use the second key to access that. And so to turn the calculator off, you just press second and off. The cursor keys in the top right hand side of your calculator are how you move the cursor around. And another thing that I won't be able to illustrate to you is making your screen lighter or darker. That doesn't work on this emulator, but if you want to try it on your calculator, press second and the up key to make your screen darker or second and the down key to make your screen lighter and find a screen contrast that you're comfortable with. The enter key is in the bottom right hand corner of your calculator and we'll have to use the enter key when we want the calculator to actually perform a function. One other thing before we really get started. Um, I want you to check the settings on your calculator under mode. Mode is right beside your second key. If you press mode, then the display that I have on the handout should pop up and I want to make sure that you have everything highlighted just like I do. Make sure that highlighted you have normal and float and radian function, connected, sequential, real, and full. The two things that are most likely to get messed up and make your answer look different than mine is if scientific notation is highlighted on the very first row. Um, if your calculator looks like that, that's not what you want. Move the cursor back to normal and press enter. And then for your decimal notation, if you have one of these numbers highlighted rather than float, that will tell your calculator how many decimal places you want to display. And I don't want the calculator to cut off my answer at any particular decimal place. I want it to show me all the decimal places. So I want to make sure that I have float highlighted to do that. All right, to get out of that mode screen, just press second and quit. Anytime you want to exit a program that you're in, just press second and quit. Quit is right over mode, and when you use that, you go right back to a blank screen. The delete and insert keys are used for editing. For example, let's go ahead and do this together. Type the one, two, three, five, six. And then when you notice, oh, I forgot the four, I want to put in a four, just use your left arrow key, go back to the five, and then press second and delete, because insert is right over that delete key. Now you can enter four, and you see one, two, three, four, five, six. 
to delete the two, move the cursor back to the two, and just press delete. Now you should see one, three, four, five, six without the two. <clears throat> By the way, I know it's hard to listen and watch and practice on your calculator at the same time. If you need to at any point in this video, just press pause and practice what I've shown you on your own calculator before you continue. All right, I'm going to clear the screen with this clear key just below my cursor buttons. And let's talk about exponents and square roots. The X square key, right over the log button and right to the left and above the seven, you see the key for squaring numbers. Above it in blue, you'll see the symbol for taking square roots. So if you wanna take the square root, you press second in your X square key. And then right over your division key, you'll see the caret symbol that's used for raising numbers to other exponents than two. Let's practice these. 16 squared, to evaluate 16 squared, I'd enter 16 and then press the square button and then enter, that's 256. take the square root of 625. Since it's the square root symbol, I have to press second to access it. Second square root 625. You don't have to close those parentheses, but I'm a little bit OCD. If I open them, I've got to close them. When I press enter, I see that the square root of 625 is 25. And now let's evaluate 8 cube. Since that's a higher power than 8 squared, I'll have to use the caret key. I'm going to call it my to the button, 8 to the third is 512. All right, let's go back to a clear screen. Just press clear. The math key leads to a set of menus of mathematical functions. The one that we will use most is number one on that list, fraction. To access the math key, it's just below the green alpha key, and as soon as you press it, you'll see that number one says fraction. Fractions are entered using the division key. So let's practice adding one fourth plus a half. Do you remember how to get rid of this um, or get out of this math menu? Press second and quit. And then let's enter one fourth plus one half using the division key for the fraction bar. One fourth is one divided by four plus one half is one divided by two. Now, if I enter right now, the calculator will give me this answer as a decimal. And that's okay if it does give me a decimal, then I'll show you how to change it to a fraction. But let's say that we remembered to tell the calculator that I want this answer as a fraction. Just press math and choose number one. Since number one's already highlighted, all you have to do is enter. And that's gonna tell my calculator I want the answer to one fourth plus one half written as a fraction. It's three-fourths. Now, like I said, if I forget to tell the calculator that I want a fraction until I've already pressed enter, one-fourth plus one-half, 
and I forget to press fraction, I just press enter, it'll give me the decimal 0.75. I can still change that to a fraction by pressing math, entering to choose fraction, and then enter to force my calculator to do it. 0.75 is the same as 3 fourths. Make sure that you pay attention to the difference between this key and this key. The first one with the little dash in parentheses, that's on the bottom row beside the decimal. That is the key that I will use to enter negative numbers. It's different than the subtraction key between the multiplication and addition keys. Let's practice using the negative and the subtraction key. I want to subtract negative 30 from negative 20. Here's what I need to enter on the calculator. Negative 30 subtracted from negative 20. I need to enter the negative from the bottom row before the 20. There's negative 20. Then minus, using my subtraction key, then the negative 30. That's what negative 20 minus negative 30 looks like. When I press Enter, I get the correct answer, 10. If I want to pull up the last thing that I entered before I press the Enter key, if I want to pull up my entry, then look right over your Enter key and you see the word Entry in blue. If I press Second and Entry, that will pull up the negative 20 minus negative 30 and let me edit that if I want to. For example, if I had meant to enter negative 20 plus negative 30, I could just move the key back to the subtraction and type an enter right over that. So negative 20 plus negative 30 is negative 50. You can put that answer here. The X, T, Theta, N button is right beside your green alpha button, and it's used to enter variables. We'll need it in just a minute. I want to go ahead and show you how to graph something on your calculator using the top row of keys. If we want to graph, for example, a line, Actually, let me go back um, to the handout and follow the directions in the order that I'm I have written them. To define an equation to be graph, you press Y equals, the very top leftmost button on your calculator, Y equals. And you can see that I have an equation solved from the last time I used this in emulator. I need to clear that out right by pressing the clear key. And I also want to make sure that at the top of my screen, plot one, plot two, and plot three are not highlighted. If one of them happened to be highlighted, then I would unhighlight it by moving my cursor to it, pressing enter, and turning that function off. Make sure all three plots are not highlighted and that you don't have any equations solved in your equation menu. To set the display window to a default of negative 10 to 10, that's telling my calculator what I want, what portion of the graph I want it to show me, negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis, negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis, go ahead and press zoom. Zoom is right in the middle of the top row. And notice that number six says zoom standard. That is the default window of negative 10 to 10 on both the x and the y-axis. Choose number six and you'll see my X and Y axes with 
tick marks from negative 10 to 10 on both axes. So let's see how to actually graph something. I need to press second and quit to get out of that graphing window. I can press clear to erase everything I've done. And let's practice graphing this parabola, y equals x squared minus 16. Press y equals to get back to the screen where you can enter the equation. And remember to type an x, you're going to have to use this variable key, x t theta n. When I press it, I have an x on my screen. And then press the square button. Now I have x squared. Make sure you use the minus, not the negative. And then enter the 16. When you press your graph key, you should have the same graph that I have on the handout. Notice that the bottom of that parabola is cut off. That's because this par parabola goes down farther than negative 10 on the y-axis. So to change that to something that will show the parabola better, let me show you how to use this window function. Window is right beside your y equals button. And when you press window, you'll see x min, x max, x scale, y min, y max, and y scale. You want your x min and max to be whatever part of the x axis you want to see. I'm going to change this to let my x min be negative 5 and my x max be positive 5. I'm going to leave the tick marks on my x scale counting by 1. But now I want to change the y min and max so I can get the bottom of my parabola. I'm going to change y min to negative 20 and y max to positive 20. And then instead of counting by ones, I want to make the calculator count by twos on the y axis. I press graph now. You'll see the bottom of that parabola. The parabola looks wider because my x tick marks are counting by ones and my y's are counting by twos, but I have gone down far enough on the y axis so that I can see the bottom of the parabola. All right, that's the basic functions of the TI 8384. Now let me familiarize you with the statistics editor of the TI 8384. I won't be able to highlight things on the handout now because this is a picture rather than text that I typed, but you can still follow along with me. The first thing that I want to check is my setup editor. My calculator automatically has six lists saved and named list one through list six. To make sure that all those lists are there, I want to go to my stat setup editor by choosing stat and number five. Number five says stat setup editor. Whenever this semester I notice that some of my lists are missing, I'm going to go back to setup editor and just press enter. The calculator will say done. That means all six of my lists are back. Now to enter data on the calculator, I'm going to go back to my stat key and choose number one, edit. And I have information that I saved from last semester that I want to clear before I do anything else. To clear data in a list, use your cursor key to move the cursor up to the name of the list. 
and then press clear and enter and you see that that whole list is cleared. I'm going to do the same thing for the second list. Move the cursor up and to the right. Press clear and enter. And I've cleared out all the data that I had left from last semester. To enter the data that's shown on the handout in list one, I'm ready to begin that. I just need to enter each number followed by the enter key. I've pasted an eight as the first entry in list one, and then I want five, enter, 15, enter, seven, enter, nine, enter, 14, enter. Make sure that you have the same six data values saved that I do in list one, eight, five, 15, seven, nine, 14. Now let's say that I made a mistake in entering that data and I wanna delete the 15. To delete the 15, just move the cursor up to 15 and press your delete key. Now the 15 is gone and I only have five entries in list one. If I wanted to enter a zero above the seven, I'm just gonna leave seven highlighted, press second and insert, and there I've inserted a zero. If I wanted something other than a zero, let's say instead of a zero, I wanted um, a 10 there, I could just type a 10 over the zero that I had entered. All right, I'm going to go back up and change that back to a zero instead of a 10 because that's what I have showing on the handout. At the bottom of this page, I have instructions that I mentioned for clearing a list. If I want to delete a list, then I would move the cursor up to the list name and press delete. Instead of clearing list one, I accidentally deleted list one. You remember how to put it back? Go to stat. And number five, set up editor, enter. Now you can go back to stat, edit, and make sure that list one is back with its data saved. To exit the stat editor, to quit, just press second and quit. Look at the handout for where I have calculating statistics for the sample data in list one. I'm sure your 1530 instructor will go over this with you in class. But in case you need extra practice, I want to show you how to find, for example, the mean of the numbers that we just put in list one. You can calculate many statistical values with the data you have saved in list one. Many useful functions may be found in the let list math menu by pressing second and stat. Second, stat, and then move your cursor over to math. And you'll see a menu that includes min, max, mean, median, sum, product, standard deviation, you can scroll down. There are more um, options below that. But let's say we wanted the mean of the data we saved in list one. I could either move the cursor down to three and then press enter, or I could just enter the number three. That will take me back to a screen that now says mean, 
and I have to tell the calculator of what list I want it to find the mean. I want the mean of the data that I saved in list one. Now notice above the number keys on your calculator, you have in blue L1, L2, L3, and so on. Those are your list names. And because they're in blue, you have to press the second key to access them. To find the mean of list one, choose second and the number one. Again, you don't have to close the parentheses, but I did. And when I enter, the mean of that list is 7.1 with a repeating six. Notice the calculator will round to a seven at the end of the display, but in its own memory, the calculator has 7.1 and then six repeating. That's the mean of list one. Now let's find the median for list one. It's under the same menu. Second, list, move the cursor over to math, and then median is number four. So I'm gonna tell the calculator I want the median for list one. and I found it to be 7.5. All right, let's do one more thing. Second, list, move the cursor over to math, and choose number five. I want the sum of all the numbers in list one. You can check your answers either with my display or I've given you the image of that on the handout. You are officially now a graphing calculator wizard and ready to begin using your TI-83 or 84 to perform the important functions of statistics.